Hello, welcome to the second video looking at GCSE psychology from AQA uh, in the developmental psychology topic. So this video we're going to be looking at Piaget's theory. So Piaget, Jean Piaget, a uh, very influential psychologist, researcher, thinker, um, and his area of research was child psychology, developmental psychology. So when we talk about cognitive development, what we mean is how a person, and, and obviously in this case a child, how a person's knowledge thinking intelligence uh, changes as they grow. How do they develop cognitively? Remember, cognitive is about thinking. How are we changing? How are we developing as we, as we grow? So children were once seen as adults who simply knew less, um, but Piaget um, changed this view. So did lots of studies uh, and challenged this way of thinking and said that actually children completely think in a different way to adults. So it's not as though that they had all the um, ability there to think and they just knew less. No, their thinking was actually different. The way that they processed the world, the way that they saw things and understood things was different to, to that of adults. And so what that does, it changes the way we think about thinking. Um, so how uh, children process and see the word, world, they haven't got all of that information. For example, there were, Piaget suggested there were stages of development. So he suggested that young children um, are just not mature enough to deal with the information that, that they take in in a logical manner. And, and you'll see that later on. So things like, um, can they see three things from other people's points of view? What do they do when the amounts of information change or, or don't, as the case may be? Um, so, for example, a good way to think about this is walking. So children generally walk around the age of one, some of it earlier, some of it later. Um, but they can't walk at, say, two months because they haven't developed enough. The muscle mass isn't there. The thinking isn't there. Um, and actually, there, there needs to be a stage. There needs to be um, a, a stage of development uh, of yeah, a critical period where they can um, eventually walk. And so it's the same for thinking. Um, so Piaget was saying that as time, go by, as time goes by, children start to understand things, numbers, um, abstract ideas. What I mean by abstract ideas is things that you can't see or touch, like a, what is a society, what is morality. Um, and the way that they develop it, they do this in, at certain times. It obviously changes for, for the individual, but in general, they develop at certain times and in a certain order. So we're going to go through Piaget's stage theory. Something else to be aware of are schemas. So schemas are the way that we represent the world um, in our brain when we store knowledge. So some people kind of think of it as a filing system, a, a folder system. How do we actually store the knowledge that we're taking in from the world? Um, and as children grow, and as everyone grows, actually, our schemas, as you study something new and start understanding it in, in a bit more detail, your schemas become more complex. So you build more and more complex schemas, you develop links between different things, um, and we get more detail, what's known as detailed representations. We understand the world in a more detailed way. Um, and so our schemas develop as well. So again, it's all about cognitive development, how our thinking changes and develops as we get older. Um, and so we have schemas for, for lots of different things. So for example, you might have a schema for summer. What does summer mean? Well, summer, you have uh, ice cream and um, you, the sun's out and you go to the beach, or if you're in England, it rains. Um, and so we, we understand the world around us from the experiences that we have. Um, and you can develop schemas for anything. You can, as I say, you can develop schemas for seasons, for what school means to you, what family means to you, but also people. So we build up our understandings, representations, ideas of what, what uh, individual people are, what groups of people are, um, and also for these, these other terms that, that become a bit more technical. So you have an understanding of what justice means. You can't point to justice, but you, you will be able to to describe what is right or wrong, even though there's, there's no hard or fast thing that you, you can actually point to. That's all developed in schemas. So how we, we represent the world, how we organize and store information um, in our brain. 
Also, another term to be aware of is assimilation. So this is when, um, as children and adults, uh, new information comes into our schema. So we've got a schema about what the world is like and we build that up. So, for example, you might have a schema about a car. So as a young child, you might experience a few cars. Um, and so those cars, the car that your family had might be red, it might be new and shiny, might be four seats, you know, that it makes a noise, you know, mum and dad drive it and it moves. Um, and then as you see more of the world, you might see different types of cars. So you might see different colour cars with different amounts of seats. What might not be shiny, some might be old and beaten up. Um, and so they're different and they, they sound different, they move different, people are driving them. So what you have to do is you have to change your schema to assimilate that. So that's what the term assimilation means. So I mentioned in my last video, there's lots of terminology when it comes to kind of neurology. Um, and, and brain development, well, this is kind of the, the um, Piaget's terminology, so you need to know what the term assimilation is. So it's when we change a schema to take into account new information. So I gave you an example there of a car, but again, yours will be the same. Um, we all do it when it comes to things like, I don't know, holidays. So you might have gone on UK holidays, and then your holiday schema develops and gets more complex um, if you start going abroad. Um, and that happens, uh, say, as children, but also um, as adults as well. So we assimilate new information. Also need to do is accommodation, accommodate new information. So this is where there's a big change. So we might, as a child, you might know what a car is. You've seen your mums and your dads and your, your aunties and your uncles and things like that. OK, they're cars, they move, they've got wheels, et cetera, et cetera. They sound in a certain way. And then suddenly you see a new thing. So it's uh, big still red, got wheels and moves, but it sounds really differently. It's normally pulling something. They're normally on uh, driving through fields. Well, what are they? Um, well, actually, they're completely different. So they're tractors. And so we have to develop a brand new schema. So this is where uh, new information doesn't fit into your current um, understanding of your current schema, and it, it's separate enough to, to develop a new schema. Um, and so that's what accommodation is. So accommodation is how we acquire new information about the world. We change our schemas um, to deal with that. So um, that's your kind of introduction to, to Piaget, the idea that children think very differently to adults, um, that that goes through stage theory. So um, we, we have to pass through certain stages at certain times. Um, we've got schemas, we need to assimilate them um, and, and accommodate them. And we'll look later on at, at more uh, terms that the Piaget's uh, looked at, something called egocentrism, um, and uh, look at applications as well. But for now, that's a, a nice enough introduction into what Piaget did. Um, so let's look at whether Piaget's ideas are, are healthy ideas, good ideas or not. Um, so we need to do some evaluation. So what we've been through so far is AO3. Looking at our AO3 and our evaluation of well. Is this a good theory or not? Did Piaget add to our understanding of human psychology and human development? Well, there's definitely some good bits there. So our first point, there's been a lot of research support for Piaget's theories. That's our point. How can we expand on that? Well, at the moment, you probably haven't got much to expand on that with. But as I say, as we look at this into more detail, there certainly is. And you need to know, again, these are mentioned on the spec. It's a couple of studies that you need to know about. And these generally, but they don't completely support. And we'll look at those studies in more detail. But they do, in general, um, support and add um, scientific understanding to, to Piaget's theory. So scientific studies um, have looked at, so there's one called the Naughty Teddy Study by Donaldson, one called Eastman Doll study by Hughes. Uh, these studies do in some way support uh, Piaget's ideas. Um, and so what does that mean? The fact that Piaget's theories can be tested, um, this is a term known as falsifiability. So if you make a claim, I've got a spaceship in my front garden, you can't see it, you can't touch it, but it's definitely there. That's unfalsifiable, it's not scientific. Piaget's made a claim and we're able to test it whether it is um, stand up or not. Some of it does, some of it doesn't, but the fact that it's testable in itself means it's, it adds to the scientific method. So it's a strength as it allows us to check if the theory is accurate or not, or refine it. And that has actually been what happened after the Donaldson and Hughes studies, um, that the theory did get refined slightly, but we'll look at that in a bit more detail when we look at those studies. Uh, another strength, the second strength, so my next point, um, is that 
there are applications to PRJ theory. So it's all well and good studying something, but what does that mean? Why are we studying it? Why is this important? So the point is that there are real world applications of PRJ study. As you can imagine, looking at um, children, looking at how children develop, who could that be helpful for? Well, that's really helpful for parents, certainly, um, but also teachers as well. So kind of in education. Um, and so understanding that children learn through forming their own representations, that there's a stage process that we go through that can really help um, classroom teachers. So um, it's meant that actually children aren't just passive and aren't just told the information, they should be guided through different information at different stages um, and involved in the learning process. So we'll, we'll look into that in a bit more detail. We'll look at the application a bit further. And so why is this important? What's my conclusion, PEC? So it supports the ideas behind the theory um, uh, and the use of theory means it's more likely to be valid. So there, there's, there's potentially um, good use and, uh, and accuracy of the theory there. And then finally, so it's not all roses. Um, so what is the issue there? Well, actually, the um, Piaget's approach, Piaget did lots of his work in Switzerland. Um, and so the fact, so my point, the weakness point is the fact that PRJ studies were all from a similar background. Expanding on that, it was all done in Switzerland with families who valued academics. So those sorts of children are from a very specific type of family. And so they're, the way that they approach the world and their understanding and things like that might be different to others. And there's this term called weird. So they were weird. It doesn't mean they were odd. They may well have been odd. Who knows? Um, but what weird means as a weakness in research methods terms is that they were Western, educated, industrialized, rich and democratic. So um, the theory and the findings from those studies certainly may apply to those sorts of um, societies. Lots of kind of um, Northern Europe are, is quite like that. But actually, does that still then hold up when you've got Eastern values, which uh, value things like uh, community over individualism? Um, maybe does it apply to non-educated people? Does it apply to poorer people? Does it apply to um, cultures where they haven't got democracy and um, they've got more uh, different different value systems? Possibly not. So uh, the values may be specific to this group. So valuing abstract thought over more vocation activities. Is that true across the world? Who knows? So the problem with that, the conclusion suggests the theory may not be universally applicable. And so we can't say this is how all children think and develop. It's how the ones that, that have been tested in this study do. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an introduction to PRJ. We'll go into more detail looking at these studies. Um, and um, applications as well in further videos. Thank you.